Hey guys, so underwater cinematography is something that I've always been super curious about and wanted to test out, and last night was actually my first chance I came to do it. I watched and researched a ton prior to it, as anyone should. Even here on YouTube, there's not too many videos, at least that I found, talking about underwater cinematography. Um, you have some tutorials or some uh, just insight from some of the bigger guys. I love the one from Jacob Owens with like the whole fish tank budget friendly stuff. But other than that, you're seeing like true professionals in their field. So obviously they're not going to talk about the indie film issues and tips and tricks sort of thing. Or what you'll find a ton of is like underwater photography or anyone who's filming for the sake of like filming uh, fish and underwater sea life. There's not too much in regards to like film cinematography, how to light outside the water, how to light in the water. Now first let's talk about gear. Uh, I filmed with my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K and when it came time to choosing a camera housing, there's pretty much only like one like real professional camera housing and the rental house basically wasn't available for our date. And so I had to look at alternative options. And basically what I found was this guy. So my camera's actually still in here. I haven't taken it out since last night. Just wanted to let the exterior dry. Um, spoiler alert, didn't leak or anything. So that's good, still have a working camera. But this is kind of a universal camera housing and it fits pretty much any DSLR, especially out there. And I will say it did fit my 6K a, a small V-mount battery as I have. There's definitely smaller ones out there, so if you have one of those. And then the SSD is on top of that. Nothing would mount, because if I put like any screw, there wasn't enough room. So I literally just, it's setting on top of the camera. And then I have my Rokinon 35 cine lens in here. Now again, this thing's 99 bucks. So if you use your logic, then just know that anytime you put a, you know, 2,500 or more camera or really any price camera in there, you're trusting all that to a $99 glorified Ziploc bag. So definitely make sure you have insurance in case anything goes wrong, which of course we had production insurance on the day of oh, computer went to sleep. Now there are a ton of downsides to this bag as you would expect again, $99 versus if you were to buy outright one of those camera housings is usually over five grand. One of them is the fact that your screen on those camera housings, you're basically so airtight. It is, um, you know, form fitted for a specific camera. Back of the housing is right up against the screen. So there's not that much distortion because underwater light is crazy refracted. I had goggles on. And so basically things are acting like magnifying glasses. So there's actually a pretty decent gap between this clear plastic back and the screen. And you'll notice even when I point the camera at it, depending on the angle, it's pretty much not viewable. So the first time I went underwater, I didn't realize that I had to view it at a specific angle to even see the screen. Most of it wasn't even just blurry. It was just outright like I couldn't see anything. And so I couldn't frame anything, couldn't make sure I was in focus. So the first couple takes, I was like, oh boy. This is gonna get bad real quick. Now I did bring GoPros and heck, even my iPhone's waterproof. So like total worst case scenario, I was like, I'm just gonna get some inserts with those just to be safe. But another thing about this case is that fact that you can't uh, focus. So it does have a couple finger holes throughout. Uh, one back here to um, change any of your camera settings. That one works fine. And then you have two under uh, the lens kind of, again, since this is the universal housing, they guesstimated that the focus ring is going to be around here, which maybe on most lenses it is. The 6K also has quite a big nose in the front, so lenses stick out a bit further anyway. Basically, when you change lenses or anything like that, what I had to do is basically pre-designate with the talent, hey, I'm going to be uh, four feet, we're going to get some medium shots. Um, and so what I'd have to do is um, dry off my hands, make sure I was out of the water, pull this down essentially, look at my the side of my lens and go, okay, four feet away, boom, set focus, throw the cap back on and then get a bunch of shots with that. And then it's like, okay, I want super close-ups, 
go back, change the lens uh, out of the water, and then, oh, I need wides, boom, set it to infinity or whatever distance. So changing focus was a nightmare. I don't know if having something like a, you know, a really good Canon with like dual pixel autofocus would have been better because again, underwater is such a different beast that I'm not sure if the focus would have focused on like, water around it, the background, or if it would have grabbed the subject. So if you've shot underwater using something with autofocus, let me know down in the comments how that went. One of the other issues you're gonna run into is actually buoyancy and sinking. So thankfully we shot in a university pool and due to insurance reasons, we had to have a lifeguard on set and I'm super happy we did for a multitude of reasons. But one of which is he actually had a weight belt because one thing you also don't realize before you go in is the fact that we are not meant to sink by default. If you just go in water, you're gonna float to the top. And even if you push yourself underneath the water, this bag is filled with air essentially. So this thing was constantly sending me back up to the top. And so I had to constantly fight it basically to keep down. And so what I had to do is wear a certain amount of weight belts, I don't know the exact weight, so that when I went under, I'd actually sink either to the bottom or just to as much as I could, but I was still able to kick and you know swim up to the surface because you don't want to stay down there forever. Also keep in mind too that since I'm not wearing any scuba gear, then each take is going to last about five to 10 seconds. And so definitely shooting in some sort of higher frame rate is going to be the best option. One, because it looks cool, but two, it's going to give you that one or two seconds of actual usable footage and allow you to turn it into about 10 to 15 seconds of actual usable footage. Real quick, I'm going to interject as I'm editing this video. Uh, I forgot to add one point, which is a big one, safety. The reason I just said that we only did one takes for 10 or 15 seconds isn't because the talent and I are only capable of holding our breath for 10 to 15 seconds, but one, we're doing this like 50 times, and so the exhaustion levels go crazy. When you're fighting weight belts, you got camera gear, uh, she's dealing in a mess of cloth and because the scene was being crazy, um, chaotic. So basically what we did is had a very short meeting with um, me, the talent, and the lifeguard before shooting anything where we just talked about general safety. We can't give any sort of directions or really communicate under the water. And since she was supposed to act like she was drowning, we needed some sort of signal to know if she was actually in any sort of danger. And so as a general rule of thumb, we said that, hey, we're not gonna do any more takes than 15 seconds. So if you notice us underwater for that amount of time, then we're in danger. Now with lighting, I was really nervous going into it and I definitely learned a lot very quickly. One is again, we were in a pool area and there was a ton of lights. I mean, this was a huge, uh, like Olympic size swimming place. And so the lifeguard was able to turn off some overhead lights, but certainly not all of them. And so basically you see everything in the pool. We wanted this to look like the kind of abyss essentially. And unfortunately you see the tiles on the ground, pool walls. And so in post, we're definitely gonna have to go in and fix all of that, either through rotoscoping or color or some sort of crazy tricks that either myself or the After Effects artist will do. But yeah, so I brought both my 200 watt lights to have over top essentially, and really ended up only using one. It was powerful. I was using my Pixel 200 watt, basically just had someone hold it close, but not in the water. No one needs to get electrified here. And that mixed with the kind of commotion of the talent moving about in the water, causing the bubbles and everything, made a really cool edge light. And if all those other lights had been turned off so that the water was like pitch black, but just that light was kind of edge lighting her, it would have looked so good. So it's definitely something I learned for next time of one, we didn't really get to location scout, my one friend who's the director went to school here, so he knew what it generally looked like, but we didn't have any time in terms of like going in, doing any sort of test shoots. We basically had two hours on here and it ended up being about um, one and a half hours of just like setting it up, getting in the water, testing things out, and then about 30 minutes of actual shooting. So in a perfect world, uh, you definitely wanna give yourself a full day's worth of shoot if you're trying to get a significant amount of footage. This scene in particular for the movie that we're shooting is kind of a cutaway scene where we only need like 10 to 20 seconds. So that's why we were able to still get what we needed. So all in all, 
it felt exactly how uh, the first time you try anything out, especially in the creative world goes. Um, I'm very happy, nothing went you know, catastrophic. My camera still works. Uh, we got enough footage. I was able to review footage on here. I'm about to take it out for the first time since it's all dry and out. So hopefully you guys learned a lot in this video now. I know I'd get a ton of hate comments if I didn't at least show some of the footage that I grabbed last night. Uh, again, using the Pocket 6K and the underwater housing. And uh, yeah, so here you go with that. And let me know down in the comments below if this helped you out at all. Have you ever done any underwater shoots before? Are you preparing for one and you are doing research when you found this video? Love to hear from you guys. Don't forget to get subscribed and don't miss all the videos to come. Thanks guys.